Hey, and welcome back to another C Sharp video. We're in the midst of a activity where we're doing a read and write to a text file. So you can see I have a text file here that has uh, six names in it. Each line has three parts separated by commas. So you can see the first name, comma, last name, comma, and then the website URL for the person. So we're going to define a class called person which will have three properties in it that correspond to the three columns in each line here. So let's get into our code. So I'm going into the uh, project here and I'm going to add a new class. Let's name this thing person. So the three properties for my person class are going to be the first name, the last name, and the URL. And so I'll use the shortcut prop, P-R-O-P, and then press tab twice, and then I can uh, do some shortcut typing there. So I'll look for first name, last name, and URL, and they're all strings. Now those are the three properties, and so while we're at it, I'm going to create a constructor. So this will save some time later on. So highlight all the properties, I'll hold down the control, and press period. So I'm looking for the uh, item that says generate constructor. And so when I choose that, it will take uh, three parameters and allow me to create a new URL. So let's save this. So we probably can just close the um, uh, class for the, for the person. Now let's come back into our regular program here. So I'm going to select pretty much uh, about half of the code there and delete. So what's left is a file path and a string, a list of strings called uh, lines. So the goal here is to create a new list of type people or person. So the list is called people. So now I want to fill the lines list. So let's use the file.readAllLines and we'll use the file path. And remember, we have to convert this array to a list. So the next thing I'm going to create is a for loop. So for each. So I want to do a for loop for each line in the list of lines. So this next line that I'm typing is going to create a new array of type string. We'll call it items. So if we do this right, each item array will have three elements because we're splitting each, text, each line of the text file. So we're using the comma as the split character. So you should realize that if for some reason you have a badly formatted text file and you don't have a comma or you have too many commas or not enough commas, then this whole system will come to a crashing halt. So after I create the items, I want to create a new person. So there's two ways we could do this. We could create an empty person and then assign each name, or since I've made a constructor, I can do it this way. I can say we'll take the items and we will number them from 0, 1, and 2. So this makes a big assumption that item 0, item 1, and item 2 actually exist. So if we split the line correctly, this uh, program will run without a problem. So finally, we get to use the people list. So remember, list is type person of people. And so we can do people.add, and our new person is P. So what I'd like to do now is to simply print the list. So let's use a for each loop. We use for each of person P in people. Then each time we go through a new person, we're going to do a write line and print the person. So this probably will not work like we expect yet because we need a toString method for our person class. But let's try it anyway. So you can see that the program ran. It looks like there are six items in my file. And when it printed, it just said, I'm printing the object person. So let's create a toString method to make this look better. So let's open up the person class. And let's go to the end of the code here and create a new toString. All right, so for the toString method, we will have to do an override and tell it that we're going to return a string. So inside of the code for the toString method, we'll return uh, the three properties, the first name, uh, glued onto the last name, and then also attached is the URL. Okay, so let's run the program again, and we should get a better result for our print. And so now you can see when I do a print for each person, we get a lot of text here. All right, so now I'm going to create a new destination. I'm going to rewrite the list and use the toString method to print the new list. 
So let's call the string uh, out file, and once again we'll use the, uh, the strange uh, syntax with an at symbol. The uh, file is called outfile.txt. Now what I'd like to do is just do file.write all lines and do an out file as the uh, parameter. And then the, for the list, I'd like to have people. So you can see that I can't write directly to the file. So the only thing that a write all lines um, method will take is a list of, um, or it's an array of strings. And so people is not an array of strings, it's a list of uh, type people. So what I'm trying to do is create a list of type string. Uh, I'll call my list out contents, and it will be a new list. So now I can set a new item in the out contents list. So out contents dot add, and I want to add a string. So the p dot two string will give me that string for each line. So now at the last item, instead of trying to write people, I'm going to use the word out contents. And so that would be the uh, contents of the new out file. Let's save it and run it now. Okay, so it printed a bunch of stuff to the screen. Let's see if it actually printed to the files as well. So let's go to the file explorer and I have an out file and there it is. I can see the out file contains the two string method and the uh, people or the test file contained uh, just their names with a separated comma. So I've uh, changed the format of the text so I can see that I can read and write to a text file. In the next video, I'm going to show you a challenge. You're going to create the similar uh, application, except we will use a graphical user interface.